Let me do that again now. One, two, three. Do you yeah. have to do it? <laughs> yeah, of, of course. It's part of the program. We only <laughs> I think we should make everyone do this. Like everyone who comes here. But here's the thing. Like we should not tell them. Right. So like you do it, I do it, and then we just stare at them. <laughs> And then we evaluate <laughs> if they get it or not. Like that—that that is the tradition. Yeah, uh, that's why. Not, not telling them. Not, you know. Uh, okay. so All right, Habib. Okay, <laughs> this is our first podcast of Studio Culture. Studio Culture, yes. And we uh, came up with the concept to try to talk with artists and other art professionals, mostly about the culture in the studio. What makes art art? Yeah, I think it started off as, uh, like, you know, it started off from these conversations we were having in our studio, mm -hmm. conversations about anything and everything, but I think usually it's they centered around art, art making, culture, uh, human behavior, everything, mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes political <laughs> arguments mm -hmm. and whatnot. And uh, I guess we're just trying to sort of extend that by inviting sort of, you know, other art practitioners, artists, cultural practitioners, professionals, uh, anyone and anyone, you know, that we anyone think. Anyone who wants to talk to anyone us. Anyone who wants to talk to us, exactly, <laughs> more or less. Um, and we're starting today with uh, Hannah Al Saadi, yeah. mm -hmm. who is a Qatari artist. She's a graduate alumni of PAPR. PAPR at PAPR. PAPR. ECU Arts, Qatar. Class of 2015. Yeah, class of 2015. And then, uh, should we get into the trajectory now, or do you want to just Wanted like to give more of her uh, sure professional uh, resume? We'll do the sure. quick sure that she went on to two residencies at the fire station in Doha. Mm -hmm. yeah. She then went to New York for a fire Before station. Before that, I worked as a graphic designer okay. and the planning and statistics authority. And yeah. I only say that because I think it's kind of influenced my work. But yeah, then I went to, not New York, Rhode Island <laughs> 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 to study in Rhode Island School of Design. Then I moved to New York, only stayed there for one year, did a residency there too, worked in a gallery, and then came back here, worked work in Rubaiya, which is the quadrennial, a new quadrennial that will happen. Qatar in museums? Yeah, it's in Qatar Museum, under Qatar Museum, and uh, the inaugural show will be in 2026. And I work there as an uh, exhibition coordinator, and I also work here as an adjunct faculty. Great. And then, you know, you have, obviously, you have your own practice, practice of course. that you've been you know, yeah. uh, working on. That's what we're here mainly for today, <laughs> <laughs> just to figure out yeah. wha what really Hannah does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, yeah. All right. Let's just get right into it. Mm -hmm. then. Um, what have you been doing in your studio? What do you do? What is your? Uh, how would you talk question. about your practice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just um, like so. so I feel like at first when I started working on my practice, I guess I was just like doing whatever I feel in the moment, and then that's I think also like what I said last time to uh, the student foundation year students is that I just maybe I guess like how I started just like seeing all artists what they do and then just doing things not necessarily thinking about a subject but like I guess think about the assignments that we get and like in as a student and then think about something, whatever. But uh, yeah, and then after that, I don't know what, I guess maybe I was influenced in one of my, uh, one of my projects I did and, um, and I just like was doing it just like kind of like lightheartedly in a performance class. I think it's like the, one performance class that happened in VCU, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We only yeah. had one yeah, performance yeah, yeah, class yeah, 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 yeah. with Christine Wang. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess like what I did is I was, I think she asked us to 
do a performance art like outside and then I only and I had no idea what I was doing to be honest but I was just like wearing naqab abaya and then I just like wore a tutu on top and I was just like walking all over and Cornish actually mainly but I also kind of like worked in education uh, walked in education city so that was the performance so I guess maybe like that was kind of like started my art practice because I feel like after that uh, my art practice mainly became like about women generally subjects about women like socio-political um, discourse that is I was like women issues like bodies and stuff like that so yeah I wanted to stop you in between actually but I'm yeah. glad you continued but like you s you, I mean, you say that I all the time. I, 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 mean, I know you say this all the time, but you know, she always says that, I don't know, like I just put on a naqab and just put on a tutu and you know, you make it sound like it was, I'm sure it was arbitrary at some point, but it was. There was also, <laughs> but I, I, I want to go back just a little bit further though, even okay. like when you're a student, when you were a student, mm -hmm. you know, and I was a student here too, mm -hmm. and uh, we're all in that, ex we're all like, like exploring, trying mm -hmm. to figure, I guess mm -hmm. that's what. Like college is mainly, it's like you yeah. know, like really figuring out, yeah. uh, you know, who you are mm -hmm. and what you want to do. Uh, but then there's always this kind of like pressure to do a certain type of work, mm -hmm. uh, all these influences. And you said that a little bit, like, you know, you were just looking at artists and what they did. And mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Dr. Isa calls it mimicking. And we all do sure, that sure. at some point. We kind of mimic, but also sometimes maybe like mimic multiple ones so we doesn't look like we're mimicking you know, a project that's what i was also like doing mm. but yeah sorry continue mm -hmm. no i was just asking like did it uh, did you ever feel like the sort of uh, pressure of like you know doing a certain type of work or something you know as a you know young qatari woman artist so yeah, when like i was that? a student yes i remember like i brought up i don't know if you michael remembered i brought up the that subjects all the time that I was like oh like I really want to make my art or like when people s I really want when people see all of my artworks they know like the same person did them mm -hmm. and I feel like it's actually it was like that like I feel like style. I huh A style or like <laughs> not necessarily style. style I think like there is something that and I don't know like how to point it out uh, that like in all my artworks and now I can see it like when I go up I feel like I can I can now see it but like I always had this pressure I don't have this pressure now actually uh, usually like when I work on something I spend so much time working on each project and then every time like I work on something it's kind of influencing a new project you know so like it's on forms a new uh, artwork while doing it so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah interesting what are your thoughts michael on the i know you're kind of into yeah. the whole like intuitive you know like not thinking i mean you know like thinking doesn't precedes i guess the doesn't the have making to. It, doesn't it have can to for yeah. sure but i think i i'm really um liking what hannah's saying about maybe finding that uh, sweet spot between doing, acting, sometimes on impulse. But then at some point she must stop and think, reflect on what she's mm -hmm. done, and yeah. then move it forward. And maybe that's what she said it uh, previous works inform mm -hmm. uh, future works. Future work, so yeah. maybe in between there, there's some thinking. Uh, and of course, every artist can be different every day in the studio you know some yeah. days you can go in and be a uh, intuitive art maker other days you can go in and sit down and start reading an article or yeah. uh, you know looking at other artworks or other topics that could then pique your curiosity uh, yeah. to something else which again you know we sometimes have this uh, um, dichotomy of uh, thinking not thinking yeah of research and working and yeah. all of that and like, we all know, probably yeah. do a combination of both but maybe at different intensities or different intensities at different times yeah yeah um, yeah certainly i think hannah's work 
Well, I think, again, that's a, a really strong part of her work is that it, it has a, a core of consistency that's not just random, but at the same time there's this element of uh, ambiguity or uncertainness or uh, there's space for people to interpret her work in different ways so it's not overly didactic. Interesting, yeah. I mean, I always notice that, like, I, I think you, part of your practice, and, you know, maybe you you may or may not be thinking about it, or it may not may or may not be intentional, or, y you know, uh, but, but I think um, uh, other people and how they look at your work is a huge part of, so yeah. almost, you can say, almost as the, all of these people around you, all, all these viewers are, in a way, informing and are part of the work, because yeah. a lot of the times you're, you know, very, I mean, it seems very mischievous, but... A lot of the times when people ask you, and I know this because I've heard <laughs> it and it happened to me as well, is when you ask Hannah about her work, she's always like, I don't know, what do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never, like, you know, and I know you don't like this whole, like, having to explain about the work, the work being written about, or all these, like, you know, the concepts and all that, and then whatever people tell you, you say that, oh, yeah, that is it, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, sure, it could be, and <coughs> sometimes... That's what it becomes, like, you know? Yeah. And then your next, your whatever you do next is informed by, yeah. you know, uh, sure. and, you know, that is a very, uh, that is a very interesting way. I mean, I know it seems, like you said, and I love the uh, irony and, um, I, I, not irony, I would say, I love the, uh, the, the paradox because it's, it's, there is randomness, but it's cohesive. It's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. cohesive. Sure, and, sure. Uh, and random so it's a very it's 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 a good balance somehow she's figured and it out and that goes back to what hannah just said about her her early works wanting she wanted it to have this connection to her as a Qatari female mm. and maybe she's gotten away from that but maybe she hasn't so much because i think still that work is informed by those yeah two things absolutely i think so but again, like back to the the, the naqab and the tutu and the, <laughs> the, the, the performance that you did, uh, there is definitely one, there is definitely a socially engaged aspect to it. And we've mm -hmm. been throwing around that word quite a lot this yeah, week, yeah. so <laughs> I'm just, I think I'm just going to bring it up. Uh, sorry. Uh, but, and you always say, you know, it just, I just decided to put this on, but like, you know where does it where does it come from? Where how do you in fact make those decisions? Uh, uh, you know. I didn't. I think we had um, what is it called? Like in the studio, we had so much of uh, customs that we can uh, use, and to be honest, like I can't. I wasn't th like in the performance class. I remember. I remember like I wasn't actually interested in the performance class, you know. But many of my friends took it. I was like, you know, let's just take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, you know, like I didn't see myself as a performer. Yeah. I still I don't see myself as a performer at yeah. all. I think in oh. this region, most of us like I I don't think any of us. I I don't I don't remember us being excited about a performance class. It always seemed like strange and weird yeah uh, to do i mean i remember also like but we did have fun i remember like i was having so much fun uh and then it's mostly like we were basically like playing and i feel like mm -hmm. this it was play basically yeah yeah and uh, yeah we had the costumes and then i thought it's kind of like two things that don't make sense together they like the two and that and naqab and I can I remember like I also like wanted to wear the naqab because like you know our culture and stuff I didn't want people to see me so like it was kind of like practical at the moment. Mm. So yeah, so like basically that. The other thing, like two things that don't make sense together, that it is something that I do a lot in all my um, projects. So I'm in very interested in contradiction and um, all that. So, yeah, basically I was kind of like interested. And then, yeah, just play, basically. And, yeah, walk in the corniche. Uh, we, I remember like we want, 
we had to do something outside, you know, like not in even like in education city or do something also like out of our comfort zone, basically. So yeah, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. And we could always um, move away from this. Uh, but in previous conversations, mm -hmm. you've talked about um, the ballerina projects, mm -hmm. and you've had several ballerina projects, mm -hmm. the sculpture, mm -hmm. um, the spinning uh, mm -hmm. music box. Titled. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one, and then the other one titled La La Land. But La anyways. Yeah. And you had mentioned something that was news to me, that um, there is some um, trepidation for young women to perform ballet or to be involved in ballet mm -hmm. uh, because of the public performative aspect of it. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. So then it's interesting to me that you went right for that, like you're going to be uh, performing in public uh, yeah. you know, with this nod to ballet uh, through the use of a tutu. Were you at that point uh, thinking about that or was it later that you came to? It was later that I mm -hmm. came to it. And also, like basically, also like when I was doing um, the sculpture. Actually, that happens while I remember, like when I was doing the sculpture too. I was, um, I don't know what I was thinking to be honest, but um, yeah, I just, I, I was just like fresh out of VCU, and I kind of like wanted to remember like all our assignments it's w it's always like this um like when we just go out of university it's very difficult to start like your projects so that was also like you know very difficult for me to do anything uh, but you know like i was just like basically remembering like what i did in school what i was interested in and for some reason and i don't think it's like i don't Maybe because I don't like that project, and people always tell me yeah, I should. Yeah, you often say that you hate that you. Yeah. You, you say that you hate your most known work. Yeah, I always hate like so. I always don't like when my projects get hyped for multiple reasons, uh, and this project got hyped. So like I remember when I was fresh out of school. Even like when I was in school, I wanted something. I was always trying to do things that kind of like controversial. And I wanted that. I wanted that because I thought like this is what will get me in the s into the spots. That's what artists do. This is yes. how you get noticed. Yes, yeah, basically. Yeah. Did that come from your experience with Damien Hirst uh, project and prize that you won? No. No. Did that come from the Damien Hirst? show that was no, no, no. that was here at that time okay no i just uh but it's interesting maybe. i mean there is an overlap right because that is mm -hmm. uh, i guess after the takashi murakami i don't know if murakami was before i think murakami, murakami was, before, was right? before but i mean i guess that was for me i always think about this and we could have a mm. this conversation in a uh, you know uh, in a different time for d in a different conversation but um that was actually one of the first introductions of contemporary art mm -hmm. in Doha mm -hmm. and then we have this sort of su like mega superstar artist who does this incredibly conf confrontational mm -hmm. you know ridiculous like outrageous works and mm -hmm. you know I don't uh, think they brought the outrageous work though I feel I mean just like they just brought very colorful I remember maybe. walking in to the show mm -hmm. and the Hearst, or the Hearst yeah, yeah. Oh, the Hearst. like as okay, soon as Hearst. you walk in I thought Murakami. <laughs> oh sorry no not Murakami yeah. uh, but like you walk in and on the left you, there's a photo of him in the morgue with a dead body smiling like literally picking up head and then right beside it is the you know the shark mm. uh, in the formaldehyde mm -hmm. tank mm -hmm. uh, ridiculously titled mm. uh, and the cows and the co I mean you mm -hmm. know that was like for something that is being introduced to a whole people, whole culture as, uh, you know, contemporary art, that's a bold move. And, you know, I'd like mm -hmm. to know more about how or where that happened. Yeah. But surely that was also one of our first 
uh, as students, I guess, as art students, these are mm. some of the first mm. contemporary art shows that we sure. went yeah. to and we saw. But yeah. even before that, Anna had the experience using studio. The Damien Hurst experience, right? Was that after before that or after? Yeah, after the show. competition yeah. was after, after yeah. the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, I think now thinking about it, actually, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I feel like what now made me not like making a very controversial things is that sometimes like it always get out of context um and i think like usually people mostly people i feel like have like a one-liner conversations about it and i think that's why i kind of like stopped and i remember like i stopped not producing work, I was make producing work, but like I stopped, um, I'm, like I'm, I deleted my Instagram account. I never now post anything about my work and then kind of like stay in the low basically. Um, I don't know wh where I'm going with this. I, I don't remember <laughs> what was your question. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> like, since, I, I mean, I, I understand, but that's always the yeah. problem with sensationalist work sensationalist yeah. both in the yeah. in the you know the absurd uh, like in a con like you know uh, uh, sensationalist in that sense like this mm -hmm. shocking absurd but sensation is also in this too appealing uh, sense yes. like it's always it never works uh, you know there's yes. always problematic and I'm glad you but it's also a, you know it's again it's like a tactic a lot of artists use in the beginning of their career mm -hmm. like you know and sometimes yeah. they never stop doing it like that becomes and you you see artists who yeah. practice for like they've been doing it for like 20 30 years mm -hmm. you know there, there's this thing that i notice in your work which is uh again very you know it, it's cohesive it's it, it appears in uh, uh all your bodies of work mm -hmm. or your body of work mm -hmm. and it's uh, this uh contradiction mm -hmm. this uh, you know this clear like you are it's you are trying to make it very confrontational by putting very contradictory elements mm -hmm. uh, in like in your work mm -hmm. and that seems to be a very common uh, yeah common thing that you do is there you know and that's a very age-old you know is there a work that's coming to mind yeah you? like for example the uh, so again sorry things. to refer back to the, <laughs> to the ballerina uh, yeah. La La line, but another one. Let's yeah another or one. shop off lips mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, what else we got I mean, it's not necessary. Like, also, like these, the tiles. Uh, yeah. I don't know if this new body of work that you're making, the tiles. Yeah. Um, what else? But I don't know if we're all gonna call them like. Okay. Yeah. They're not opposites, but there are. They are like you know these, uh, very contradictory elements yeah. in a way like you know yeah. if you get what I mean I mean yeah let me ask a question though because I, I understand where you're coming from and I, I agree but I think it's not that simple that there are these uh, surface um, contradictions in sure. some work there is yeah but mm -hmm. I'm thinking of other work that like the Fulla Earth Day painting the yeah mm -hmm. cake sculpture mm -hmm. um, like I struggle to s find that contradiction. Maybe I'm not as aware of it because of the cultural uh, context mm -hmm. or just insider knowledge in some ways or, but I would say there's a subtlety of those works that maybe take a longer read that aren't overtly as controversial as say, sure. Anna walking around the Corniche and the Baya Nakab and yeah. changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even in that, there is this clever subtlety of uh, this. Uh, so recognizing that the act itself is uh, a sort of, let's say, a rebellion. Not rebellion, mm -hmm. like you. Yeah, you know, I would say rebellion. Uh, rebellion, yeah. Rebe so it, it, that the, uh, there is rebellion in the act. Uh, yeah. But then you always ha have this way of there is a hidden justification behind it. Like you always be like, sure, I'm wearing a tutu uh, mm -hmm. and walking around, <laughs> but I'm wearing it on, you know, yeah. this thing. So yeah. it must be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. 
even with your new uh, skin, uh, mm -hmm. like you know the uh, the rubber skin, uh, mm -hmm. you know tiles uh, tiles that y that that you're making. There's always that you know even in the uh, the 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 s the uh, hut, mm -hmm. uh, the sound clip mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it's really not your voice, but mm -hmm. you know it, it is based off of your voice. So mm -hmm. is it? So there's always that dilemma. Mm. You you throw in that dilemma, mm -hmm. s w which allows for this benefit of the doubt situation. Like you know, mm -hmm. uh, you you put in this dilemma, but which is what I guess artists do, right? We we f we find a dilemma and make a vocation out of it. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> like you know, that's kind of uh, you know what we do. But uh, I always found that interesting. There's this cleverness. There is a subtlety. So yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, but. More often than not, there are there is I, I guess the the absurdity I, like um, a lot of your works are they're not uh, easy to uh, how do I put this in the right like they're not they're they're for lack of a better word again and I don't want to be too repetitive but they're confrontational yeah like they're strange there is this bizarreness there is strangeness. Uh, you know, sure. playful. I mean, mm -hmm. even it's mischievous. It's playful, yeah. uh, but it has it. It has this element of this. I don't want to say shock, but yeah. you know, out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, like you know, it's fantastic mm -hmm. sometimes. Like you know, it's uh, awesome. Well, even just um, you know, formally in this cultural context, the art scene in Doha. Some of these works we've talked about, Damien Hirst. They're yeah. new. They're they're, they are shocking yeah. for the art, knowledgeable art public in Doha. Yeah. Because maybe we're more used to seeing paintings or sculptures made with traditional materials, and then all of a sudden you have this uh, shark in the formaldehyde tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you have cakes mm. stacked up in the middle of the gallery. And I think for many people, it could be their first or early times seeing. Uh, materials like that being used to yeah, make art. Absolutely. Actually, materials, that's a yeah. key word yeah. mm -hmm. in your work. Materials. Mm -hmm. You're obsessed with materials. Mm -hmm. You have a very good knowledge of materials. Mm -hmm. You have, on several occasions, I've uh, you know heard yeah. you giving advice to many people on materials, including myself. Uh, and they're a very important part of your work, like the choice of material. Yeah. Uh, we, all, we also talked about the politics of material mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. Do you want to, like, you know? I guess also, like, in regards of materials, I think I kind of became obsessed with materials, but unfortunately still, like, um, uh, obsessed with, I would say, industrial materials mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I kind of, like, at the moment try to move out of these materials and kind of, like, discover... Uh, maybe things that are not necessarily environmentally harmful but also like in regards of materials i always not necessarily think about it at the beginning i usually like when i think about materials i think what is the best material that will look so like i'm trying to imagine things i and i think about whatever the project that i'm doing and then I think how it will look and feels. And this is how I choose the material, but not necessarily. Why? Like, are you thinking about the percep it's, it's perception? Like, are you thinking about Sometimes. just objectively what it, what it what, like for aesthetic, re like that's every yeah. artist. I usually mean, like when you're putting for a paint on, yeah, usually. you think about. But are you thinking about, because your works only are only activated, one can argue, when the person is like you know when the person is looking at it and they have like you know yeah they you know yeah when they're like w are you thinking about the perception are you thinking about the perception of the i think about the perception mostly and the aesthetics but also like for example like i want to talk about the um, may i go get one rubber tiles the I rubber I yeah oh. okay <laughs> the rubber tiles at the beginning, yeah, I thought about the aesthetic of it. Of course. But then actually, like, it's kind of, when I thought about it more, like, uh, these are tiles. Yeah. <laughs> uh. 
Um, okay. And it's difficult to see here. Yeah, because the, we have lights from all sides, so you don't see the definition, you don't see the details. Uh, in but it. also, like the texture is we'll very difficult to see. We'll upload a high res photo of it in the middle uh, of the. But basically, like when <coughs> I was thinking Sorry. about this, I was. So like this is like the texture of my skin. So like I. I took a mold or like took the texture from different parts of my skin and this is how like I would also like talk about contra contradiction is that like these ki this skin is actually like covered it's I'm covering my skin but like I'm, I'm actually like showing it here exactly that's another yeah it's subtle so but it's there yeah yeah it's subtle contradiction I would say but it's also uh. like skin as the as this natural like it's a natural thing yeah. as opposed to like yeah. the same look but a complete it's a c absolutely synthetic yeah so material. that's also like so that's what i was yeah. gonna go is that yes it is synthetic but it's actually like then added to the concept that is you know like it's natural human skin but it's like an industrial material yeah. um and it's, it's in the, like the whole thing is kind of industrial you know like um the tile basically but it's even something the, industrial but even the way you produce it like the mode of production it's very methodical yeah. systematic mm -hmm. yeah almost like a formula even yeah and um so it's kind of ended this way and uh, like there are several contradictions you know like the skin and and the industrial aspect and also like the covering revealing part of it and then like the touch also so which is like which is confused like the the whole so the, many the whole w the the whole thing is about the touch because yeah. you, you see a texture but when you like move your hand across it they're two different planes like it registers really strangely like mm -hmm. you know because you'd feel that oh mm -hmm. this is where the bump would be because it's darker but it's not like the the texture the surface everything mm -hmm. is like uh, they're like uh, you know overlapping but totally different mm. so yeah. it, it gives you like this very strange sensation when you're uh, it makes it's very off yeah if you if you get what i mean you know yeah uh, that's super cool thank you so basically i don't know what else was what was the question, <laughs> yeah, there was no question. <laughs> materials materials, yeah, yeah, materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so um i guess like materials is kind of like added that aspect is like it makes me think of um it adds that like contra contradictional contradiction aspects. For example, like this, you know, like usually ties are rigid, but this is mostly yeah, yeah. like of course, of flexible. Course. And yeah, then yeah. like I did find something that kind of like looks like skin rubber. Uh, the colors like I wanted to make it looks like a marble. At but there are so skin tone colors, all of them. Yeah. yeah. So um, you're mixing skin tone colors really basically yeah okay yeah so <coughs> and yeah basically Sorry. like this but usually like materials for me at the moment even though like i want to break out from it is that usually i think about um the feel and the like how it looks the aesthetic of it and then this is how i usually like choose the best material to this design. work is really interactive like it's supposed to be yeah and you're yeah. trying to get a lot as much of your works as possible to be interactive yeah okay i guess i don't usually like think about how people interact with my artwork at the beginning but uh, it's usually also like it comes when i uh during the process mm. yeah interesting I have a question, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hani, you mentioned you're trying to break away from this um, attachment to materials. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about that? I guess um, I still I'm uh, still interested in materials. I guess like I want to, because usually like the materials that I use are produced to make you know, artworks or industrial uh, aspects. But I guess like um, there are some artists that usually like the materials that they use uh, have are more 
connected to their um, concepts. For example, I forgot this artist's name, the one who did the football. Khalid Jarrah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can <laughs> speak about it. Concrete. Them. Yeah, no, but okay, I mean, we get it. We'll, we'll throw a picture uh, of it. Yeah, Mona Hatoum, yeah. like when she used, and for example, like I used hair uh, in one of my artworks, but the way she used hair is that she used hair from specific, you know, like from real women mm. uh, who consent to use their hair and then like from a specific places. Yeah, and, and those women are somehow the subject part of the subject matter yeah. of the day yeah. so it's, yeah. it's conceptually relevant yeah. and, and whatnot yeah so I'm kind of like influenced by artists who use materials in that way um, and it's something that usually like I think about and this is how now like I think about materials but mostly like that's why I said I kind of want to break out is because usually I think about material like an uh, aesthetic aspect mm -hmm. uh, or like feel or like how people interact with it mm -hmm. so yeah but also you're looking for the contradiction as well like mm -hmm. the the the, mm -hmm. the the you want like there is something strange like you know or like you know uh, sort of uh, absurd like strange mm -hmm. like something like you know mm -hmm. uh, weird about about mm -hmm. these things like mm -hmm. they don't doesn't mm -hmm. make sense kind of uh, but yeah all right that's uh, mm -hmm. interesting what about, should we focus on an, um, a work and have Hannah kind of walk us through the process of um, how she thought of it, how she tried something, how she... Oh. I think, oh yeah, okay, which one do you have in mind? No, I was just like thinking how my previous job influence my work oh that was my question because we had a whole <laughs> conversation about it right outside the door because yeah. like I, I think it even came out of like i said and sh she was like i am so tired and like you know what i mean she said she made a remark like that mm -hmm. and i said well maybe because it's your you know doing this <laughs> like re I, oh i said oh i thought this whole like repetitive like you like to do these repetitions because it sort of like has this meditative aspect and you enjoy it. And she was mm -hmm. like, no, I actually don't. I hate it, <laughs> but I can't stop doing it. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, come on. That's so crazy. Like, I mean, this is your, <laughs> and she, and then she brought up like, you know, it's because this is what I used to do in my ministry of, ministry of planning and statistics, planning and statistics authority. job, like, you know, but yeah, tell us about that. That's super cool. Cause you actually said that in the beginning, right? You said that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this ministry job because I'm yeah. starting to realize that it's, it's had a lot yeah. of influence in the way yeah. I work. So before I didn't, so like, okay. So I worked as a graphic designer and the, it's not, I think, we'll planning and statistics authorities. Sorry, called. We'll add the doot sound when you, every time you say <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 uh, censorship. So, censorship. <laughs> and uh, I was seeing a lot of statistics, you know, like my computer was full of, squares, numbers, uh, spreadsheets, tables, tables, tables yeah, yeah, yeah. is the word. And um, I guess like I was kind of like naive before going there. And then um, I think I kind of like learned so much. Mm -hmm. And I remember like when I, after that I went to study in RISD, I realized I was doing like many of these things that I'm doing, like squares that are just like next to each other. And I didn't know why. Because you're just used to it. Because you just <laughs> yes, did that every I know, day I know. repetitively. And like I knew that, but yeah, like yeah. later, you know. And uh, the one project that I did after that is that I went to Twitter and then I was like screenshots. Well, I was doing so, so many screenshots of... <laughs> sorry. We can talk, and that, that was the project. Sorry. <laughs> Why sorry? I don't know this. I somewhat know this, but yeah. I'm almost sure Hannah has like these folders of screenshots of your <laughs> yeah. musings on social media, like yeah. you know, of ridiculous stuff that yeah. she sees. I, yeah. And I think yeah. you thrive on that. I <laughs> do. I do. <laughs> I, no, I don't, but I used to do that. Um, 
and one of the projects that I did is that like I was seeing like these women who are like criticizing women who kind of like talk about hijab like they don't want to wear hijab or whatever they criticize them they kind of like police these women but like in their uh pic the picture was called profile pictures they use other women who are not like wearing hijab and like kind of sexy and then I like take pictures of like their uh, tweets and then take like a screenshot of their tweet and screenshot of like the picture for the profile picture and then put them in all on a website and then like when you hover around like the it flips and then you kind of see that and this is kind of so like introduction yeah, yeah. it's available you know like anyone can have access to it it's not something that I made it's something that I found and then and I was telling people that with this I was kind of like making my own statistics Mm, uh, nice. That's very so interesting. But you just clarified the contradiction again. Yeah. You know. It's all, yeah. It's all <laughs> it's, about it contradiction. It was all there. It's all there. You just. <laughs> yeah. You just took mm -hmm. the two contradictory yeah. things and put them. Yeah. Together. And sometimes, yeah, like sometimes I just like interested in just seeing things that are, and then just like put it out there, like the painting that I'm working on now. I'm not going to explain it, actually. <laughs> it's very it's different. It's hard to explain without saying. It's hard to explain. Because yeah, 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 okay. it's so, it's so stupid. Like, but it's the something idea is that so is stupid. very, like, yeah. so, like, men and women took a picture. It was, like, during a class. Uh, I think it's... Uh, I love how you said I'm not going to explain it and then yeah, you went on uh, to start. I'm just to like, start. anyway, <laughs> but something that I saw, something I saw is, like, ridiculous. And then I'm just, like, I'm just showing it, you know? Uh, but yeah, like this is one project that like I just see it, and then you know like if you saw it, it's just like squares, and then I'm still like doing squares, like and just doing things that are repetitive and um, methodical. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess I don't enjoy it. Like I enjoy like thinking about it and then you know produce it from the beginning, but then like after a while, I just like I'm so tired. But like I just like keep doing it, um, and you know like for example like, like this is doesn't take time you know it takes like what fifteen minutes like I can just do it twice a day, fifteen minutes wait till it dry fifteen minutes and then wait till it dry, but I just uh, I guess the repetitive I I'm also like a person who don't like routine, um, I just I always like do like to change things around and also like one of the reasons why um also yeah like when I was a student for example like I remember like seeing my uh projects like they're all different than each other and like I didn't have any subject but I always thought like I was thinking like I want when people see my work think one artist did all of these but I couldn't do stick to one subject because I hated s sticking to one subject. You know, I always like to kind of like change. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that I'm just saying like I hate routine. I hate I hate repetitiveness. But I think like I'm not the word is not into that. But I'm kind of like repeat myself now but I just don't enjoy it well I mean the contradiction in that is that as much as you say you hate it yeah that's what you do the most of yeah. like you yeah know? yeah uh, I mean it's uh, and I mean, I've seen you I know the process of how you do that and mm -hmm. saying it doesn't take a lot of time but I think it does like does it take a lot of time I mean no the mixing know. doesn't take a lot of yeah. I mean of course like you've done it so much maybe now you think oh it's like, no it's just know. like of course like making <coughs> like at the beginning like the earlier stages like making the mold yes of course it takes a, a lot of time but you know like when the mold is ready just like mixing the rubber and then sure, painting, sure. You're, ta you know, you're talking about the later part of the yeah. the process not the whole the whole thing yeah, yeah, itself the whole is very I mean of course I mean it tedious. takes so many days it's like takes months because like mm -hmm. they're it's like a day long, you know, like every time I do one mold or like I would say like two casts, it's a day long uh, yeah. process. But, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. not all the time. It's just like once, wait till it dry and then another time. Interesting. Um, but also, Hannah, you had these, yeah, um, up. Sorry. you had this collection of tiles when we came back, when I came back to the studio two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you've worked on that project since then. 
So do you somehow in your studio have multiple projects going? Yeah. And you take breaks from things when yeah. they become too monotonous? Yeah. So like, because this I would say like it takes, every cast takes uh, like uh, 15 minutes. So like I come in the morning, the first thing I do is this, and then I work on several things. And then when it fully dries, I remove it and then make another one. And then the other one, I you know, I take it out of the mold the other day. And this is how I do it. But yeah, of course, like I always have side projects mm -hmm. that I work it's on. You're simultaneously doing uh, mm -hmm. uh, other things mm -hmm. while doing this. Yeah. It's not the only thing that you do. Yeah. Uh, but that's interesting. Well, back to the, uh, this it's, it's interesting because he said, you know, I don't like, you know, sticking to, uh, like, you don't like it. Uh, and I guess this is, I mean, I would say for myself and probably, I, I don't know if you could say that by yourself, but like, you know, I don't, myself, I don't like to stick to one thing. I, I felt the pressure mm -hmm. as an artist, and I'm sure you did too, of having a sort of a, uh, consistent consistency, body of work like, you know, mm -hmm. whether aesthetically, conceptually, whatever mm -hmm. it is like this, you can look at a body of work and say this. This is the artist, like a brand. We talked about this mm -hmm. a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. like this. Uh, there's this pressure for artists now, especially. I, I think social media has uh, has a lot to do with it, but I think it also stems from this whole like history of, you know, gallery body of work mm -hmm. and market forces at work sure, and all sure. of that. Uh, this, uh, you know, having to keep uh, keep a make a brand of yourself almost mm -hmm. like you know, but that's not what artists do. That is not what artists are, I guess, supposed to even do. Like, it, it's not supposed to work like that. Mm -hmm. you, you yeah. Know, wha so, what? and I guess this is open to both yeah. of you. Like, wha what do you think of this idea, uh, of this idea? And is it okay? I mean, I know it's okay, but I guess this is for, I guess, mainly our students who probably will see it, or younger artists or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that you, it's completely uh, okay to just break out of, whatever you're doing and do something completely different mm -hmm. and then jump to something else completely and it doesn't say anything about uh, the inconsistency that the the, the 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 variety mm -hmm. doesn't reflect badly you know like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you what do you have to say about it i feel like i'm gonna insult artists <laughs> <laughs> sure, okay. but i feel like <laughs> if an artist does one thing repeti not repetitively the, the words not necessary but like you know, like very similar, you know, paintings that are super similar to, to each other. Different variations of the You same know, thing. like I feel like they don't necessarily don't have the ability to think critically, I would say, or, you know, like to have more ideas, you know, like as an artist, you have to have like the ability to produce several, I would say like aesthetic looks. As, like several aesthetic ideas and then if you don't have that ability then like why are you being an artist you know just being <laughs> exactly sure. just this ask you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll add the you like know, we'll, we'll have, censor uh, it it's okay yeah, yeah people can tell you what they want to do and then just like produce because like it's that repetitive i guess i don't know what do you think michael it's a it's a good question i think I don't think there's a set answer, to be honest. I mm -hmm. think every artist is going to find their own way, but I think you could certainly um, prioritize uh, a certain type of art making for yourself. And I think the artists that I seem to be drawn to tend to find a place for that freedom in their in their work to try different things to mm -hmm. um, experiment to reinvent themselves yeah. and not just be um, cranking out the same yeah. projects over and over again uh, and yeah. I know there's many like sort of these uh, s not I don't want to say stereotypes but there's these uh, like w con conventional uh, ways of how we describe it like you know staying in your comfort zone mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. you know just doing what you are comfortable doing like k just k repeating but i also i'm starting to think of artists who have dedicated like years and decades of their life to one subject matter mm -hmm. like abu shakra the, the palestinian artist comes to mind and uh, you know uh, artists whose work uh, regional artists whose work is 
very influenced by Hirufiya, for example, comes to my mind. And I find something really fascinating and beautiful about, uh, oh, I hate to, this sound, this is going to sound very romantic yeah, and yeah. cringy, but <laughs> I, this devotional uh, idea commitment. of this, this commitment, this, this routine, this ritual, this, uh, you know, this continuation of, you know, because in, in a way it's, um, it's this constant inquiry into this subject matter and sometimes yeah. you know artists sometimes artists do that and it, it's not necessarily i guess uh, a bad thing in but I think there is a line though there is a difference well, i think what's yeah. happened i mean and again like i'll point to my favorite artist or one of my top for sure morandi giorgio morandi uh, right who, you know for the most of his career did the same small still life paintings and of mm -hmm. course they vary from painting to painting but yeah. uh, the variation is minimal compared to other artists so mm. I found you know I'm contradicting my own self there uh, but I think there is a difference Habib from that genuine um, consistency yeah, yeah. that you're talking about and right. then someone that does it as a uh, as a strategy for success, success. in the art yeah. world, right. which we discussed. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you know, I think that <laughs> we can certainly all agree on is yeah. not a healthy thing, and yeah. something that, in more recent times, has become more problematic. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Maybe yeah. we didn't see it in the past, but I think it's certainly gotten um, more intense with uh, hyper capitalism and uh, absolutely just. Yeah. The they find like sometimes they find this i don't want to say a scheme but uh, like or a yeah. trick but formula. they find a formula that yeah. oh it worked and you know they got yeah. whatever success or you know uh, you know uh, they're selling well or whatever uh, or they're getting recognition uh, sure. or it's something that people love a lot like you just find something that just yeah. works with everyone and it's safe and you keep doing it and this it's this idea that if you always did what you always do you will always get what you always got and that becomes mm -hmm. their m almost mm -hmm. like a, i don't want to for lack of a word, better word their mantra yeah. mm -hmm. and you know uh they they keep doing it and yeah I, there is a big difference between and i think as artists but not just as artists like you can easily i pinpoint that you can identify that uh the difference between an artist who does something very sort of genuinely devotionally for a long time and or mm -hmm. someone that is repeating because it just works yeah. uh, and uh, it's and yeah and we could talk about this more um, in a different with yeah, other yeah. guests maybe also from the other side like from the gallerist uh, curator side where of maybe course. if we were to make a quick judgment on them we might say well they like when an artist is consistent yeah. because they know what to expect easy yeah, for yeah, themselves yeah. to just describe the artist yeah, yeah, to yeah, collectors. Yeah, yeah. It makes it easier to sell a, a consistent product, just like uh, it's a cup of coffee at Starbucks or something. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that's short-sighted in yeah, some yeah, ways. Yeah. But we uh, love consistency. Actually, yeah, you know. But actually, we are, uh, I, I love that this happened because we, we talked about Are we about contradicting the ourselves now? Maybe, but I, I guess maybe not because we just we just talked about the the pressure of sticking to a style a brand mm -hmm. and how artists who want to do things differently they're pressured into sort of sticking to the same thing like the sure. the uh, what do you call it? predictability like you know uh, uh, your work is predictable in a way it becomes predictable but then uh, you know do you think it's that has something to do with this like that like artists sometimes are fearful that i just i mean i have all these great ideas and i would love to do something but this is what i'm known for you know like this is what I do, and I don't want to do something crazy, and then I get, the, you know, uh, mm -hmm. people start seeing me as this, you know, it's it's crazy to do, to do something just out of, out of, out of routine. Like, sure, if sure. I, you know, uh, I mean, you wear, uh, I mean, I wear plain t-shirts, and yeah. you wear plain t-shirts, and tomorrow, if I wear, like, this sort of <laughs> highly, like, you know, bright color illustrated sure, thing. Sure. It's out of routine. Like, mm. you'd be like, oh, something happened. What happened? Like, yeah. uh, it's just like that in work when we yeah. see an artist do something and then maybe that is, we, we love routine. We love, because we're, we're, we're creatures of habit. Like, sure. mm -hmm. and maybe that is why but some artists also, stick to it. We're also, um, as thinking beings, it's, it's okay at some point to come to a 
conclusion, maybe it's not a permanent conclusion, but a, a stopping point where something works for you and you roll with that for a while. Yeah. Um, and I know the fashion analogy is um, not yeah, exact. And, yeah, but exactly. Yeah. You know, we, we do kind of have a little uniform uh, that we wear and we like it, I think, not just because it's consistent or because it's easy, but it, it works. also says something yeah. about your values. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, 100%. I agree with that. Yeah. And yeah, you yeah. could point to art in the same way. You know, if I'm going to make a large, shiny, um, sellable art, let's call it, metallic, yeah. appealing, sellable public art, art yeah. sculptures, that might say something about what I value in the arts uh, as compared to if I made small uh, 30 centimeter square still life paintings. You know, there's different um, values at play. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, different audience. Yeah, yeah. That, that is one of the concerns. True. Uh, and this is where, you know, Hannah, I think your work right now is so interesting because you're you're actually doing many different things, including painting, which um, dolls, <laughs> which I hadn't painting, yeah. seen Hannah do painting in in many years. Even mm -hmm. though I had you as a student in a painting class, but then as you gravitated towards sculpture, um, that was a real surprise for me. Yeah. At your fire station yeah. show when I walked in yeah, and I yeah, saw yeah. technically cool, three like good paintings, very well yeah. done paintings. You're a serious exactly. painter, like I mean, you exactly. know, it's, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I I said the same thing. Yeah. to to her uh, as well and uh, that is really cool and yeah. i guess uh, i also completely agree with what you're saying it's this you know like uh, about the value system like mm -hmm. uh, a huge part and I, I mean i know this for us because we share studios and yeah. many other artists but like we don't like to think about as much as the market mm -hmm. wants us as much as us, that is what is in demand that is what is expected we don't like to think about this whole idea of like you know perception or sellability or market mm -hmm. like how it how what what the life of the work after the studio yeah. uh, let's call it like you know that is never the priority and sometimes you know unfortunately there are not unfortunately but sometimes there is artists who prioritize that and sure. you know that also works I guess uh, and uh, there's no there's no right or wrong, I guess, yeah. in, 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 in any matter. Um, it's just different value systems. True, but I suppose we can continue this if we then say um, if a certain mode, like if, if we were able to keep this variety with in the art world, the, the global art world, and have some artists that do this type of work, some artists that do this type of work, that could be a healthy to have the, the di diversity. Ab absolutely, absolutely. But just as uh, you have in nature, like invasive species that come and uh, steal all the light from other That's in everything, yeah, 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 yeah. And what I'm worried about is that the current trend is so uh, geared towards galleries, art fairs, showing, Social selling, media social media appearance brand and exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. The, all these things that that can ultimately yeah. um, diminish this diversity and uh, absolutely and make every artist uh, need to produce like that have to do for that, survival yeah. for you know? survival yeah and, and we are at that point I think we yeah. are at that at that stage and our situation is actually more unique because we're in a region where the art market is just we it's the yeah, art scene art market is right. just you know, uh, starting, but I, I love that this th this feeds into this conversation that we have we've had in our studio all the time uh, about. Uh, Let's ask Hannah about. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Some yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Hannah. Reaction yeah. to yeah. this recent conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. A question might be like, what's your ideal mode of dissemination of once your work is finished? Like, what do you hope? will happen? Do you like working in the gallery system? Do you strive for something different? Do you not care so much? You're just mostly focused on making? How do you, how do you interface with? I mostly focus on p uh, making. Uh, 
I always try to not make like not focus on things making artworks that might look um, very sellable I don't very sellable is not the word actually but uh, for example like basically like you all talked about like having um, consistency uh, also like only like making maybe like paintings I always make try to make things that it's not that like I think like I don't want to sell my work but I always try to not make not focus necessarily like on selling mm -hmm. uh, and usually like trying to thinking about like the concept and like the interaction of people like when they see my work uh, like and what happens to the work after that? Of course, like, I would be happy if my work got, like, sold. Uh, but again, it's not, uh, it's not the main purpose why I make them. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why you, let's say, like, dislike the ballerina work because it's like this, everyone loves it. It's a one-liner. It's easy to <laughs> like, understand. It's mm -hmm. highly sellable. And maybe that's so. why. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it is like a sculpture. It looks kind of like 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 a monument, mm -hmm. you know. It can be, so it's only a sculpture, yeah. I would say. Yeah, yeah. Like a traditional sculpture, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so I'm, I'm saying that it, the, the <laughs> two works that you made the other one, the the sellable one from like it was a yeah. part of this this work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like the sellable one more because it's kind of have. It's an object. It's a. It's it a, is an it's object. Which one are you referring to? The La La Land or yeah, the, the La La Land. La La Land yeah. I think it is like a product that can be sold, but I think it also can be like a fine contemporary art at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's kind of like I think it's stronger conceptually than the other one, the bigger sculpture. Um, yeah. Thank you.